Okay, um, so my favorite, so when, when I sit down on a PMM, uh, and you know, the customer is already telling me, hey, Marcos, you know, we have a problem on this node started at this time. Those are the first two things I need to know, right? Like which node I should be looking at and what time the problems started. So the first uh, dashboard I will take a look is my SQL instance summary. I will make sure I have my, um, the proper node selected. Um, and then I, I will start going one by one on very much every panel. So what I'm looking for, of course, are anomalies. And I don't know what's going on. Like they, they only tell me things are slow. That, that's how it usually goes. They tell me it's a slow. And so I, I have very little clues. Sometimes they will tell me some more clues, but if not, what I do is go search for anomalies on every panel. So um, sometimes uh, it's good, or, or most times it's good to enable individual um, metrics on each panel because they're gonna show a different picture. Because look at this connections, it's only in the 20s, 30s. So it's dwarfed by the max connections. So when I turn it, when I turn on everything, I don't see anything. Like the, the, the connections are changing. Like you can see 28, 26, 30, 29, whatever. But I, I, don't, I cannot see it. On the other hand, when I enable only connections, I can see it. And you know, sometimes you will find a very large spike. Uh, you know, perhaps it was all the time one, two, one, two, and suddenly you got 40. And 40 connections, they could push enough load to make a problem. But again, you will not see the 40 connections if you have a 2000 uh, line re uh, reference here. So turning on and off every metric is many times necessary. Um, the same here, right? Like aborted connects. I'm, in this case, I can see all zeros, so I can ignore it. But, uh, you know, otherwise, if, if you see a few and, and you know the, pro the time when the problem happened, then enabling just aborted connects will allow you to see the spikes. Um, then big threads connected and average threads running. These are pretty important. Like this is telling me uh, like the, the way this changes and the way uh, connections change are telling me about the arrival rate and the residency time. And um, these are telling me about actual concurrency. This is when someone is asking you how much concurrency your database can, uh, is, is uh, having or is uh, withstanding or is serving. I'm, I'm not sure what word would you like to use, but uh, concurrency in MySQL is threads running. So um, how many are active at any one time? And typically exactly. it's going to be difficult to get more than like that's the active ones that are that are uh, that are consuming cpu resources right that is correct so, so it's very difficult uh, to get above the number of cores it, well it's impossible right i mean you can always have some uh, additional processing with hyper threading um if you don't count your hyper threaded uh, cpus as cores so a 16 cores with 32 hyper-threaded uh, processing threads, uh, it can probably do 32. Perhaps it can only do 20 plus. Uh, it heavily depends on how fast your memory is and uh, how much different data those threads are accessing, etc. But yeah, you know, number of uh, threads running greater than number of CPU cores that is very likely to uh, become problematic. I can see uh, you're pushing more load, um, uh -oh. which is... Oh, oh. I am <laughs> I am not. Oh, you are. You are. It's you the are. Dungeon I Master's pushing right more here. load. Oh. 
he's going to start throwing me trolls from all the angles. So, okay, I haven't um, take a look at the resources yet, which, you know, at this point, I will need to take a look. Um, so at the very bottom of this panel, I have a node summary, and it's going to tell me a bit about the system, but it's not giving me CPU cores. Oh, I thought I'd have it here. So I'm going to have to go to um, system node, node summary. So virtual CPUs too. Um, so with the amount of, am I looking? No, I'm looking at the wrong one. Oh my God, eight, that's much better. So eight CPUs, uh, I like to be here so I can also see the speeds at which they are running and I can see the amount of cache on each one. Um, something is a bit off here. Here it says two, here it says eight. I have to guess this is delayed. All right, I don't uh, care. You're looking if at the last eight... 12 hours, go, go to the last, like change it to like the last five minutes or 15 minutes. Um, did it change the... Yeah, yeah, so there you Course go. Course 4, Virtual 8. There you go. Yeah, um, so it, for whatever, it's it's weird because some of these summary screens, um, I don't know when it takes the snapshot. It's something we, we should probably ask because if you look at like a 12-hour period and the system wasn't running or it was on a different class of box, does it show you the first iteration or the last iteration or the average iteration? Yeah, uh, that, that's, that's a good question. Like, yeah. Usually, yeah. you know, in, in a more stable system, you will see this and you will know it's okay. But yeah, this, this we just started a couple of minutes ago, so it was prone to change. Mm. By the way, I'm actually getting errors in the application. You're getting errors? Mm -hmm. What kind of errors do your customer? I can't Let me see. I can't connect. Oh, you're abort you're getting connections aborted, timeouts. Mm. Uh let's see, let's see. And thread cache, you're creating threads. This is usually uh, bad. Uh, creating threads can be slow depending on your pthreads library and whatnot. 